I'm going to try to do as many odds, 29 through 43, to match your evens that you will do in class for daily work. Um, until this video, I only can go 30 minutes on the video, so I'm going to go a little fast. We already went over the domains of the composite functions, and we're going to compose these functions. Each problem, you have to do four parts, A, B, C, and D here, and um, you can also see the domain better, especially with the rational functions. So the first one's going to be 29, and 29 is, let's see, let me get ready, f of x equals 2x plus 3, and g of x equals 3x. So the first thing we're going to do is compose f and g together. So this really basically means f composed with g of x. Please note, since these aren't rationals here, it means the domain of this is all real numbers, and the domain of this is uh, x is all real numbers. So this is going to be easy. The composite will also be all real numbers. Okay? So when we compose, basically we're going to write f first, and g of x is 3x. So I write down my f, which is right here, and everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put parentheses. Oops, sorry. So everywhere there's a, I'm going to write 2, I'm going to write my f function here, 2, but for my x, I left it blank, and I'm going to dump in g of x, which is 3x, and I get 6x plus 3. Okay? And so that means um, x belongs to all reals, because you have to state this each time. Now let's do g of f. And I will get faster and faster with this because I'm just trying to do a lot of problems. So in this case, I'm going to write down g. g is 3, and everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put parentheses, and I'm going to dump in f of x, which is 2x plus 3. Simplify, and we get 6x plus 9, where x belongs to all reals. Um, we also need to do f with f. Whoops, f with f. So that means um, f composed with f of x. So I'm going to write down f, which was um, 2x plus 3, but everywhere there's an x, I put parentheses. And I'm just going to dump in f of x again, 2x plus 3. Simplify, I get um, 4x plus 6 plus 3, which is 4x plus 9, and x belongs to all reals, which we already knew that from the get-go. If they're both all reals, then it's like that. And then we're going to do g of g. Why do I keep doing that? All right, so g composed of g of x. So basically, I'm writing down g of x, which is 3, put in parentheses, and I'm going to dump in g of x, which is 3x, that equals 9x, and x belongs to all reals. So this is pretty simple, and I'm going to keep moving on now and go a little faster. The next one I'm going to do is 31, and 31 is f of x equals 3x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared. All of uh, Both of these are all real numbers, so that means my domain on all of these are going to be all real numbers. Makes it nice. So we're going to compose f with g. So I'm going to write down first f, and everywhere there's uh, x, I'm going to dump in x squared. So we get 3x squared plus 1, where x belongs to all reals. I'm going to do g of f. So I'm going to, we're basically writing down g. g is x squared, 
So basically, everywhere there's an x, I just put parentheses, and I'm dumping in 3x plus 1. Boil that out with that a plus b squared thing. If you do it that way, you're going to get 9x squared plus 6x plus 1, where x belongs to all reals. All right, now we're going to do f of f. So that's going to be f composed with f of x, which I write down f. Put parentheses where the x goes and dump in 3x plus 1. You compose this and you're going to get 9x plus 3 plus 1 equals 9x plus 4 and x belongs to all reals. And the last one, g of f, which are not g of f but g of g. And that's going to be g of g of x. Pretty soon I'm just going to start writing these guys. And that means that everywhere there's an x, I'm going to input g of x, which is going to just be x squared, which makes it x to the fourth. And x belongs to all reals. All right. Next one is 33. 33. Both of these are um, all real numbers again. Makes it nice. G of X equals X squared. Oh, come on. Work. Plus 4. So we're going to do F composed of G of X. means I write down F first, but that's just a X squared, and I dump in um, G. So I'm going to dump him in, because he's on the inside there. X plus 4. And if you use your formula, that's going to be x squared plus 2 times 4 is 8x plus 16. x belongs to all reals. Because in both of these cases, there's no fractions. x belongs to reals. Um, or x is all real numbers. Now, we're going to do g f of x. It means I'm writing down g. And g is um, g of x. Um, g of x equals x plus 4. So I'm going to put the plus 4 and I'm dumping in x squared, which gives me x squared plus 4. x belongs to all reals. And we're going to do f of f. Erase this again. I'm doing it in red. f composed with f of x. That means for f of x, equals x squared. I leave the x blank and I'm just going to dump in x squared there. Because this x squared is your f of x, which is x to the fourth. This was like the previous problem. And x belongs to all reals again. And the last one, g composed of g of x. So I'm going to write down g of x and Everywhere there's an X, I'm putting parentheses, and I'm going to dump in G of X this time. So G of X is X plus 4, and I get X plus 8, and X belongs to all reals. All right, that was 30, let me write that down, 31. This was 31, right? No, this was 33. Okay, so this was 33. And we're going to 35. So 35. 35 states. Oh, here we go with the rationals. And here, there's, this is where it gets harder. We have f of x equals 3 over x minus 1. And g of x equals 2 over x. Now, in this case, we have to check our domain. Our domain here for f is x cannot be 1. Let me write it the proper way. All reals, but x cannot be 1. And g of x is all reals, but x cannot be 0. So it's everything but 0 for g and everything but 1 for x. Now, before we settled the 
domain earlier, but now we're just going to compose and look at it. So we're going to uh, compose f of g. So since g is on the inside, we already know it can't be 0. And we're going to write down f. So f, and everywhere there's a parenthesis, I'm going to put um, 2 over x. So basically, this equals, this number is what, 35? All right, so basically, we, we have 3 over 2x minus 1, which is 3 over 2 minus x over x. Okay? And then, we already know it can't be 0. There's where this is. But when you simplify this, uh, and divide, we're going to get 3x over 2 minus x. Remember, I'm going to put it up here, 3 divided by 2 minus x over x is the same as 3 times, and 3 times, and you flip this, x over 2 minus x. In this case, we know x cannot be what? 2. So here we have x cannot be 0, and x cannot be 2. So actually, we didn't set this to... If you set this to 1, like we did earlier, then you would have noticed that x cannot be 2, but this is kind of proof here. It can't be 2 as well. Okay, the next one we're going to do is g composed with f of x. That means we're really looking at this domain and we're going to write down g 2 over x and everywhere there's an x we're going to put 3 over x minus 1. So clearly it shows that x cannot be 1 which we have there but now let's simplify this and we get 2 times x minus 1 over 3. So basically we have the same thing because this could be, we just can't let x be 1. Okay, C is f of f. So I'm going to write down f, which is um, 3 over x minus 1, and I'm going to dump that in here. 3 over x minus 1. I'm going to simplify that, which equals 3 over 3 minus x minus 1 over x minus 1. And then when I simplify that, I'm basically bringing this up here, and I get 3 over x minus 1 over 4 minus x. So in this case, we knew for f that x, we go back, x cannot be 1. And also we have that x cannot be 4. Okay, and the next one is g, composed with g of x, which is basically... Um, 2, um, what is this one, 2 over x, which is 2 over x again, because this was your x. So we get the x cannot be 0, and then when I simplify this, I get 2x over 2, which just equals what? x. And we have x cannot be 0. Okay, the next one is 37. We have another rational, and it's very similar to what we did, just did. So let me look at 39 and see, because we need to move along. Let's do one with the radical in it. Let's do 39. In 39, we have f of x equals the square root of x, and g of x equals 2x plus 3. We know the domain here is x, but x has to be bigger than or equal to 0. 
and here it can be all real numbers. Okay, now we got to compose this, so we're going to get <coughs> f composed of g of x. So that means I write down f. Everywhere there's an x, I put g. In this case, my g is 2x plus 3. And we're going to notice that in this case, we have to look at the domain here. And set this has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So when you set that to 0, it's all reals, but x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 3 over 2. Okay? Um, g of x, g of f of x, I'm going to write down um, g, and everywhere there's a x, I'm going to put f of x, which is square root of x, so I get um, 2 root x plus 3. We know here that this has to be bigger than or equal to 0, so we just write x such that x is bigger than or equal to 0. We can't have a negative in there. Okay, now when we compose um, f with f, we're going to um, do f of square root of x. Which basically is f with square root of x times the square root of x. And if you look at this, this is really x to the one half to the one half, which is x to the one fourth. So you get uh, the fourth root of x, and x has to be bigger than or equal to zero for your domain. Okay, and we have to do g, g of g of x, and that's going to be um, g of 2x plus 3, which gives you 2 times 2x plus 3, plus 3, you simplify all that, you get 4x plus 9, in this case, this is just um, x um, X can be all real numbers. Okay. So let's look at 41. Let's see if it's any different. 41. Is that 41? That's yeah, a little different. Let's do 41. Okay. 41 is f of X equals X squared plus 1 and G of X equals square root of x minus 1. Now this one, uh, for f, x is all real numbers, but for g, x has to be bigger than or equal to 1. And all we're going to do is compose f with g. So I write down f, and I get everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put g of x, just be the square root of x minus 1. This cancels here, so you get x minus 1 plus 1, which equals x. Um, however, the domain still remains that x, uh, such that x is bigger than or equal to 1. You still have to take the g portion of your domain. Now, the other one is g composed with f of x. So I'm going to write g down. Everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put x squared plus 1. And then this was minus 1 here. And you're going to get square root of x squared, which just equals x. So for this one, um, you get, um, which is actually the absolute value of x. So the domain is x, and x can be all real numbers, because that's what we had here, and you can have all real numbers here. And for c, 
we're going to compose F with F. So, F with F, sorry. So, this is um, F composed with F of X. So, we get F of X squared plus 1 equals X squared plus 1 plus 1. And this is um, squared here. So this yields x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 plus 1, which equals x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 2, where x can be all real numbers. And then for g, we get g of g. And this is going to be g of square root of x minus 1, which is the squ this is a little harder. So you're going to get square root, the square root of x minus 1 minus 1. Um, so basically, if you set this to um, square root of x minus 1 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, we have the square root of x minus 1 is bigger than or equal to 1. Therefore, x has to be bigger than or equal to 2. So that, that way, my domain is x such that x is bigger than or equal to 2. All right. Because basically, you're setting this, this part here to 0 for the domain. But bottom line, your answer was that. Okay. And the last one is 43. Let's see what that one says. 43. Uh, we can skip 43. All right. So that is all. And um, looks like the last one, 41, was the hardest one.